Well, look, I hope you've had a chance to actually look at this. Um, perhaps it appears to be a little bit more involved, really, because of the presence of that current source. Well, let's first label our mesh currents, okay? I'm going to say we've got an I1 mesh running like so. Uh, we've got an I2 mesh current here, and we've got an I3 mesh current sitting over here like that. Now, how do we do this? Well, the problem is, when you traverse around a mesh current, what are you really doing? You're really summing voltages, aren't you? So the issue is, how do I know what the voltage is across that current source? Well, at this stage, I really don't. So a way to deal with this problem is that I can basically use maybe two mesh currents in my summation of voltages. So let me show you what I mean. All right, now we're going to start with the I1 mesh over here, and then we're going to kind of work in this direction like this. So we're going to take basically a loop, as it were, that is really like this, incorporating the I1 and the I3 mesh currents. So let's do this. So we're going to start right here. All right, so what do we got? We're going in this direction. We're going up in polarity. So really what we've got is we've got a 10. We come across this component over here. So I1 is leading, so we have a minus bracket. This is I1 minus I2. Closing that bracket, we'll multiply that by 500 ohms. So we have this. Now, yeah, we've got a problem if we continue down here because we don't know this voltage across the current source. So what we'll do is we'll go really in this direction and we'll get the voltage across this 2K resistor with the I3 mesh leading. So we've got a minus then open up a bracket, this is I3 minus I2, close the bracket, multiplied by 2K. Then we've got our, what, 4K resistor over here, so it's a minus I3 times 4K, and we're really back at the beginning over here now, and so all of that is equal to zero. All right, so you've got one mesh current equation here. Well, let's look at the I2 mesh current equation. So we'll work on this guy right here. All right, so if we're working on this guy right here, we'll start at this point. I2 is leading, so we've got what? Open up a bracket, put a minus sign in front. This is I2 minus what? I1, and that's times the 500, okay? Coming on round, okay, so that is a minus I2 times what? 3K, and then coming over to here, we've got a minus, open up a bracket, this is I2 what, minus the I3, close the bracket, times what, 2K. We're back to the beginning. All of that is equal to zero. All right, so now we've got two mesh current equations. So you could say, well, all right, yeah, I need three, three equations to solve this problem. Yeah, you do. But think about this. Do I not know what the current in this, in this little branch over here is? Well, it's five milliamps, isn't it? But it's also equal to what? I1 minus I3. So we can actually say that 5 milliamps is really equal to the I1 minus the I3. And so we now have enough information here to really go ahead and solve for I1, I2, and I3. So that was a problem that seemed a little bit more complicated just because of the presence of the current source. It really wasn't, but it did, it did involve us actually trying to have a look at combining two mesh currents like this, the I3 and I1 mesh, the I3, I1 mesh, in order to actually sum voltages around a loop. And that's how we solve that problem. All right, I'll see you next time. Thank you.